coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Today I have a meeting with Natalia Sakalova. She's here trying to raise financing for projects in Russia. And you can sell it to the international market. The problem is the Russian government is discouraging outside investment. <laughs> All right, don't let him cross it. I don't give a shit. I want 200. Getting into a scuffle is not all that unusual. People get heated. I heard me say a dime and him say a dime. There's a lot of competition. I heard everyone else say at 15. We have a new sales assistant that's going to be interviewed today. Nice meeting you. Is this the industry that you're really looking for? I came here to be an artist. Oh, okay. Daddy get dressed for work? Should I wear blue, brown, black? I wake up about five in the morning. Brown. How about brown? Brown. My family's up around the same time that I am, given the fact that we have a six month old. Okay. I didn't even know Justin was up, but I gotta hurry up and get ready. First chance I get, I check up on the market, so I kind of get my game plan started early. Little Ashton, my little butterball. We work crazy hours. I'm on the grind 16 hours a day. I don't get to spend as much time as I like with my family, but right now I'm trying to build a financial future for them. Just you want waffles or pancakes? Pancakes. I'm out of the house by 6.15 the latest to beat the traffic into Manhattan. Once I'm on the road, I contact my clients, and they also contact me. I'll give you a buzz back, Jim, and we'll see where the market is, where we're holding on to. I see exactly what's going on with the market, and what trades we have lined up for the day, what's in profit, what's not, and who I need to contact to inform. So if we can max this out to maybe 75, 78, I'll consider exiting out of that. Just over the past weekend, the market was selling off. The market dropped well over 300 points. To top that off, we have oil just continuing to skyrocket and hit record highs. We're seeing some signs of capitulation uh, where individuals are just panicking for any slight news announcements that, that have been coming out. Those that are willing to adapt to change are the ones that are going to survive. I've been in this industry since 1995. It's not like I'm wet behind the ears. I've seen the downturns and the uproars of the market. When you wake up in the morning, it's like a rush. For a guy like me, I deal with millions of dollars. It's a feeling of power. My brother and I, we started off in the business at the same time uh, back in 1994. Did you see the unemployment numbers this morning? Wow. Well, crude oil ended yesterday what, down about a, uh, 124. At the same time, the housing stats came out, which is the lowest in three decades. I think it's evident that we are in a recession. You know, with the market down here at these levels, I see some good opportunities. I really do. My name is Ben Londrigan. I work on the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. 8095. We're sitting on the floor of the VIX pit. Double bid! Double bid! VIX is the volatility index that measures the movement of the S&P 500. VIX is often referred to as a fear gauge. When the S&P 500 moves down, the VIX tends to move up. In a lot of ways, it's really a gauge of sentiment and, and what's going on in the marketplace. I got into the business 
by accident. At 95, tied to 20. I was a math major, and I thought, well, it'd be a good practice for where I really want to get a job. 100 up. 100 up. In reality, it was much more interesting than the consulting and investment banking jobs that I was looking at. 15, 30, 500. We have guys that range from Dominic with the PhD in physics from Stanford, and we've got other guys who are English majors. With the advances in electronic trading, math majors are big, programming majors, guys who can understand that if-then mentality. 95 a dime! We trade for our own accounts. We have our own pool of capital, and we use that to make our own trading decisions. I didn't know no one even was there. No one else even said at a dime. All right, don't let him cross that. I'm pretty sure. I want 200. Getting into a scuffle is not all that unusual when there's open outcry trading. I, I heard B say a dime and him say a dime. I, didn't, I heard everyone else say at 15. There's a lot of competition for those trades. Well, how many people even showed at a dime, too? A broker walked in and wanted an order, and when he asked for the market, it seemed like only two people responded. So there was some discussion. If no one shows, if no one shows at a dime. People get heated when you're negotiating how to split up trades, which translate directly into money. 15 bid. 300 bid, right? Double bid. It's part of open outcry trading. Everyone likes to pound their fist and, and get upset, and then things usually cool off and kind of move to the next trade. Today I have a meeting with an international investment consultant, Natalia Sakalova. The guys that I'm working with, the guys that are up, uh, the f is wrong with this guy? A guy up five and a guy up seven on a big chunk turns into a lot of money. We're meeting at Tavern on the Green in Central Park. Natalia was born and raised in the former USSR. She was educated in the US and she's here trying to raise financing for projects in Russia. There are very few U.S. investors who would accept the political risk of investing in Russia today. No matter how good the project is, if Putin decides that he's not going to allow money to leave the country, investors are going to shy away from it. If you don't keep the returns, it doesn't matter how great they are. In addition to the U.S., she started to go to the Middle East to raise money. She's accumulating a stable of investors. And uh, rather than invest in her projects, we may try to get her to invest in some of ours. What's up, Natalia? How are you? Hey. Great to see you. You as well. Natalia is in touch with an incredible amount of investable assets. <laughs> She's very, very well connected. I just came back from Russia, Ukraine, Turkey, going to California tomorrow. My universe is three blocks from 53rd and 5th, so... <laughs> what project has you the most excited? Well, I think the very interesting one is the project that has to do with the casing head gas, which is the gas that's emitted in the atmosphere in uh, any oil well. All the oil wells just burn it up because it's not viable for them to process it. But what's been happening in the last couple of months, the Russian government passed the mandate that all the gas has to be processed. So that's a great opportunity for a lot of companies. And this is the equipment. So you can see it's very portable. You put it next to the oil well, and instead of all the gas being burned up, it's being condensated into the pipeline and then taken into either trucks or railroads, whatever is available, and you can sell it to the international market. So your technology is, is the conversion process? Uh, primarily, yes. Is it cost effective? That equipment is not that expensive. It's about $20 million to you know, get it going, and the IRR would be about 20%, and the company has no way out of this. They just have to have somebody who can come in and do it. The projects that she's representing would ordinarily be appealing to everyone. The problem is there is zero investor appetite for financing Russian projects today. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I left about a month before my 18th birthday to uh, come to Chicago. I had a cousin who traded on the floor of the CBOE. And he said, you know what, it's, uh, make a better living for yourself. I was selling Jordache jeans back in 1980 on the trunk of my car, two for $25. 
And he said, you'd be a natural, so come to the SIBO and see what you can do. Yeah, I got a couple of customers here from Thinkorswim, so I want to show them what was going on. I started as everybody else running on the floor, making a couple hundred bucks a month. There's actually another trading floor above us. I just happened to be down here today. I was showing my son uh, how, how I pay for his college education. How's it going? Good seeing you again. Good luck to all of you. Good seeing you again. I started trading in 1983. Everything well? Everything's Where, Where's William? I don't have a college degree, and I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever had a losing month. Now you've got guys who have MBAs that have never had a winning day. We had a guy that wrote books on algorithms, made the worst traders. My best trading I ever had was in 87 during the crash. Luckily I came in flat, I had really no positions on it, so I was able to take advantage of the market and I was able to ride the wave. How's it going, my man? Hey, good good seeing you again. For three years I didn't leave the pit to go to the bathroom. Hey, stop by and tell us what the hell happened to you. I certainly will. Because <laughs> you were here one day for about a month ago. What happened to him and nobody knew? <laughs> I'm not the fly-by-night speculative trader who bets everything on one trade. I'm the guy who tries to make 30, 40% a month on my trades. I'm not trading to impress my friends. I trade to feed my family. It's in your blood. It's just something you have to do. I don't know anything else. Ken, I know we have an uh, interview schedule today. Oh, uh, great. Okay. This is about the third one that we had come in this week. Four. So, Oh, four. The last one wasn't that great, so. We have a new sales assistant that's going to be interviewed today. Our previous sales assistant it just didn't work out. Um, I don't know if the pressure got to her, but we did have to let her go. She almost cracked under pressure. We need someone that's a little bit more assertive. What we're looking for is definitely reliability. It's just a matter of being here, not being flustered, not crying, and getting emotional. And it's tough, you know? This is just a business that no one wants to hear any excuses. It just has to be done. Hopefully she's the right girl. So we'll look this one over and we'll see where we'll go from there. Elizabeth? Yeah. Phil Broussard, how are you? Hey, you Phil. Nice meeting you. Uh, Ken, he's my partner. He's just wrapping up a call. He'll be with us in a couple of minutes. But we'll sit down right now and uh, get a little bit more acquainted. After you. Do you have a resume that we can take a look at? Yeah. You came highly recommended from the agency, so. Yeah. Are you originally from New York? Um, no, but I've been here for about nine years. Oh, okay, yeah. great. I came here um, to be an artist. Oh, okay. okay. I've done a lot of things and, you know, musician, performer, and um, that was my dream. I still bartend one day a week, but it's just so tiring. What brings you to us? Obviously, I know you need employment, but um, is this the industry that you're really looking for? I definitely need to think about long term. I need some more stability. You know, I haven't had health insurance in about four years. I feel like it's time that I, I grow up a little bit. Well, just to let you know a little bit about this industry, I'm pretty sure you know, it, it, it can be a very, very stressful environment. Sometimes you might uh, have to deal with an irate client. Our last assistant was great, but unfortunately the pressure got to her. And she got to the point where she was crying. <laughs> Thinkorswim is an online brokerage firm, and the thing that we are best known for is our technology. We have received ratings from Barron's as one of the best platforms for option traders. Good afternoon, Thinkorswim. We named this company Thinkorswim because we figured nobody will ever figure out what this is, so it'll be hard to copy. A couple of newspaper writers said that was the dumbest name they ever heard for a brokerage firm, so we said, you know what? Good. That makes us want it all the more. And if you want, just try to pay 60 cents. You want me to put a bid in for you? Our software is free. People question why we'd be giving it away for free. And when we explained to people it was the Gillette model where you give away the razor to sell the blades, all of a sudden it made sense to people. There's nothing we act pretty fast. We have a new software release every six to eight weeks because the customers feed us ideas. We take them, feed them to our development team, and we try to implement those changes and bring them up to speed as fast as possible. The customers are voicing opinions all day long. And that way we make the platform as good as possible. So we're never satisfied here. We're always going to make it better and better. Upstairs on the second floor is the trading wall. Tom had this vision. Let's build a board 
that's just like what they had at the exchanges that we would trade at. If you want to get somebody excited about trading and you stick them into a dark closet with one screen, it's not that exciting. So what we did is we built this wall, 160, 23 inch Mac monitor, side by side, this kind of like NASA space station type trading center where we can take customers and train them at a completely different level. We gave them a great wall, we gave them a great platform, but we told them they couldn't sit. That was our way of giving them some sort of torture and some pain. So you stand here and you trade, and this is how you execute orders. I don't know if you've been to some other brokerage houses. It's flat out boring. It's important to get people excited about what they're doing. So you've established a foothold in, in the Middle East? Middle East is a type of place you have to be there. I mean, it's not, you can just, you know, shoot the emails back and forth. Right. If you don't show up there in a couple of months, they forget about you. Do you, do you talk with these people about non-energy uh, investments, the Middle Eastern investors? Natalia is an incredible salesperson. If I could get her to introduce my products, I think she could raise a significant amount of money. But I mean, they're awash in cash, right? So they're looking for opportunities, places to put this money? Yeah. Are you you're close to, uh, you know, the folks that allocate that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. those kinds of assets? Yeah. That could be a place where we can work together. But we are more focusing about trying to get the money from them to invest in oil and gas projects. Right. Her love is energy projects in Russia. But there's a lot of talent there in Natalia, so we want to retool her and give her more investment tools to work with and uh, different parts of the world. What, what do you have in mind? Alternative investments, non-real estate, non-energy. Equity funds. Hedge, hedge funds. I think that would work pretty well. I've got to get you to sell my projects. You're relentless. <laughs>I thought it went pretty good, I think. They seemed really cool, so I don't know. It would be awesome. It's always great to see Natalia. She's dedicated, she's enthusiastic. She's an incredible salesperson. It was good to see you, have a great trip. And I'll Thank speak you. to you when you get back. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. I think I recruited her. She has a pretty large Rolodex of investors. If I could arm her and give her something to sell, I think she's gonna knock it out of the park. Half my day is spent looking for money managers, and the other half is spent looking for money, investable assets. Right now, what I'd like to do is follow up with Rich Giacomo, who we met last week. Rich's specialty is emerging markets, parts of the world that I don't ordinarily cover. Like Natalia, Rich has an eye to sell me his products, and what I try to do is turn it around and sell him my products as well. Oh. Rich, what's going on, Rich? Hey, how are you? Terrific. Anybody good in the pipeline on the investor side, on the manager side? A couple of my guys are pulling money from managers because they weren't what they thought they were. Right. And I think by the end of this year, they're going to need to allocate some money quickly. But that money, they, they're not going to cash with that money, right? So they got to redeploy it. They're licking their wounds, you know? Right. So let me talk to you about some of the managers I have to put some of that money to work. Yeah, I look at them. You never know. Terrific. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right. The business is cyclical. Some markets boom, some markets consolidate, contract. The beauty of working with a Rich and a Natalia, there's always a hot market or a hot asset class. So by building these relationships, we move towards whatever product is hot. All right, Phil. So, I mean, what did you think about uh, Beth? Uh, Elizabeth, um, I thought she was pretty, I thought she was pretty, Pretty nice. She's just a—I don't know. I mean, what was your what was your 
My your honest her? vibe on her. Honestly, I say we go with her. I really like uh, Jessica. I thought she was nice. But you know the problem with Jessica is that she's really quiet. Like she doesn't talk much. You know what? But this is can, this can be a little bit intimidating for some people. So you know she she, she probably right didn't there, get right the there, breakout. So I don't want anybody that's intimidated. She's intimidated talking to us. Right. You know the thing I got back from Beth was you know she's a people person. Beth didn't seem shy at all. She seemed fun. Yeah, she seemed fun. Which is good. Which is good thing. Right. Exactly. She good. seems hungry too. So yeah. she's that, she that's seems, what I'm um, looking for. Somebody that's really really driven comes to New York with a big dream and it's it's not working out, which is okay. But she's redirected her focus and I think we should go with that. Yeah, well, um, what we'll do is I'll call the agency in the morning and um, uh, we'll take it from here. Badges ALO. If you look at the last three letters of my last name, ALO. Everybody is known down here by their badge. It's your acronym, it's the way you're identified in the pit. Every SIBO member gets to choose their acronym. People tend to take something that has something to do with their name. Unfortunately, someone else on the floor had Dom. That's all they had left. This has nothing to do with my initials. I just decided to get something that would stick in a broker's head, you know, and it worked out. Yeah, it's good, man. You know, it keeps, gets in people's heads. Keg, call me Kegger. A lot of times you might recognize somebody just from their acronym and never really know their first or last names. I know 10% of this crowd's first names. YPR, uh, I have no idea what his name is. In all honesty, I don't know too many first names around here. It's because of him. Paul. Yeah, him. Yeah, you know it. It's him. I'll meet guys out socially on the street, guys that I've stood next to for 10, 15 years. It's uncomfortable. I'll be like, hi, how you doing? And I'll be like, oh, this is, um, and you could tell they don't know my name. So they'll introduce me as Alo to their wife and everything. But that's what I'm known as. Alo Vera, Alo. My kids even call me it. I mean, my kids, hey, Alo, you know, like when they want to give me a hard time, they'll call me Alo. One of the things you try and do is like go through your mind, you know, what are the insulting combinations. You know, at PMR you'd think they'd say Palmer, but for some reason people say Peemer. Uh, I have no idea why. For me it's bony, um, beanie, uh, bone. I don't know what I was thinking when I thought BNE would be good, but. You hear all different ones. Uh, Matt over here, MST, he goes, they call him moist. Well, I was always misty. Like gorillas in the mist. How many misty? 200 misty? And then here they started calling me moist. Moist, 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 moist. You know, it's it's cool. Kind of sticks with you too. You get some name recognition, and you don't really want to change that. Actually, I tried six different acronyms to end up with D and D. I tried DJD, my uh, acronym. Okay, and then uh, I tried DMZ. Well, when I was deciding what my acronym should be, I was talking about it with my 12-year-old son, and he just looked at me and said, I just don't understand why you don't have mom. That's your name. Group one, this is bad. OK. So, um. Oops. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That they're finally all the analysts, all these guys. I say analysts, you know, analysts. Okay, let's try that one again. <laughs> no, you need a little take thing, right? <laughs> take 23. 